Many of us grew up listening to horror stories about savage humans who murdered every living creature in sight to procure food. Nobody ever suspected that far beyond our domains, some of them had gathered to build such an impressive civilization, ruled not by force, but rather by wisdom. The Aragway country was, country was governed not by a single person, but rather by a council representing communities from every corner of the far north. Instead of scavengers, there were farmers and ranchers, smiths and carpenters, builders and architects, and so on. Their military arm was a well-organized and highly trained body, practical experience notwithstanding. It had not seen serious conflict in over a century. Theirs was a peaceful and prosperous civilization, a hard-won luxury, one seeded by the bones of tyrants past and watered with the bloodshed of countless wars. Such was the extent of the country's success after the Civil War that even Orc merchants from the western regions and coasts of the Great Continent were allowed within its borders. While Keshar did not take kindly to the sight, but Alinea reminded me that there was a time when the human kingdoms comprising the old empire had fruitful relations with the Orcish clans of the far north. Bearing witness to the wonders of civilization rekindled my faith in Erdia's ability to heal its profound wounds after the fall. There was simply no way we could allow the dark forces of Uriah to take all of this from us. I knew what had to be done. The matter was deciding upon an approach that would not result in our self-destruction. So I gathered as much information from pos as possible from Arathan and his men, rehearsed my plan, and prepared for the inevitable meeting with the Grand Council, and, as much as it pained me, I decided to keep it secret from Elinia and Malkeshar, at least for the time being. Eventually we arrived at the outskirts of Railfin, the northern capital. Even from a distance the city was far larger than any other northern settlements we had seen thus far. Dominating the landscape was a tall, ominous castle. Behold, our capital city, Railfin. It certainly is an impressive and beautiful city. So, where are we going? The members of the council gather in Adavian's keep, the fortress at the heart of the city. They will be waiting for Lord Gallus, but I don't think they'll let the fairy and the necromancer in, so they should wait here while we... That is not up for you to decide, well. We are coming with him. Hey! Hold on, who goes there? It is I, Arathan. I bring the elves' leader with me for a meeting with the council. It's a fairy, and, and the lich? Seize them! No, the lich is their servant. He's perfectly safe, don't worry about it. Just... I am not their servant! Alert the central garrison! We need reinforcements! What are you doing? Lord Gallas, we were worried about you. Is that... Oh, bright gods, is that the Lady of Light? So you actually did it? We... What are these people doing? Release the Lich and the Lady, you fools. They are our allies. Oh, oh, apologies, sirs. Please don't tell the captain about this incident. Or anyone else, really. Hmm. You lowly fools ought to be thankful that we both have a compassionate disposition towards lesser beings like you. Or you'd be begging us to spare your useless lives. That's quite enough. Malkashar, Inodian, do you think... The Grand Council could allow Melkishar and Lady Alinea's presence? I would rather have them by my side if we had to discuss the present state of affairs with the Northerners. Yes, I am absolutely certain they will, Lord Gallas. They have expressed an interest in seeing her. She's quite a legend around here among the more educated Aragoyf leaders, it seems. Follow me. Welcome, Lord Galas, to the Grand Council. We must say, we feel greatly honoured by your presence here in the Grand Council Chamber. To think that the forest elves managed to survive and thrive in the middle of the southeastern desert. 
It is truly a disgrace that we did not find out of your community before. All these blood and tears could have been avoided had we gone searching for civilians, for the civilizations hidden among the cruel sands. Thank you for your hospitality, my lord. It's our pleasure to meet such a fine people as well. So, Lord Anodion came to us with the bulk of your not very impressive army, and he also brought your civilians. He has asked us for shelter since your people lost their home in the war against the Chaos Empire. Pardon me, sir, but it is not a war. Our home and most of our forces fell victim to a large-scale invasion by the Chaos Empire, started with no provocation whatsoever. We were completely unaware of their existence until their troops set foot in our lands. And then your people hid underground, and found this pet lich of yours, who is for some unfathomable reason, allowed to walk around freely rather than punished for his crimes against nature. Who allowed him into the council chamber anyway? I did, and we have already discussed this before, countless times I might add. Malkishar and the Lady of Light shall be considered our friends for as long as the elves treat them as such. Very well then. They seem awfully prone to lumping you together with me on the undesirables list. How do you feel about this turn of events, Alinia? I am not particularly impressed, but at least you seem delighted by the irony. Say, Lord Galas, Lady of Light. And I ask this on a purely hypothetical basis. What possible benefit would allowing your people to settle lands within our borders give us? Why should we cede resources that could be put to better use, serving our people? That is an excellent question, my lady. So, allow me to ask, for how long have you been struggling against the Chaos Empire's advances into the Northern Lands? Your messenger, Erethan, made it sound like you've been aware of them for quite a while. We had dealt non-violently with them for years before they decided to cease all trading and communication with us. Still, they have not proven to be an actual threat thus far, beyond a few occasional skirmishes and glamdraw. The dwarf kingdoms of Valgran and Hearthgar shield us from potential attacks coming from the Heart Mountains, and the southeastern desert is an effective natural barrier against invaders. Hearthgar fell just a week ago and the enemy is now recruiting orcish mercenaries to their cause. How long do you think it will take them to penetrate the Aragwaith country? Adopting a defensive stance and hoping for the best is exactly what resulted in Hearthgar's doom. And your proposal is? Gallus, what are you planning to do? My proposal is as follows. We shall pledge allegiance to the Grand Council as long as our people are granted lands to live in the Aragwaith country. Furthermore, we shall officially declare war against the Chaos Empire, and we expect you to do likewise. We intend to cooperate fully with the war efforts, placing our army at your disposal. Wait, what? My lord, you can't decide this on your own without asking the other lords. <laughs> Good plan, boy. That is quite a bold proposal, Elf Lord. However, if the enemy is as strong as it's been rumored, can we really expect to win a war against them with our combined forces alone? Even if the Chaos Empire is already trying to undermine the Far North's political stability by enlisting orcs, we might still be able to turn the majority of them to our side if we play our cards cautiously. The Western clans might agree to join us in alliance if we give them something in exchange, such as some of the Empire-controlled lands. Then, by extension, we would be allying ourselves with the Orcs, too. This must be some sort of joke. Gallas, you would not agree to such a thing, right? Quiet, you. This is no time to let personal grudges guide our decisions. That might actually work. We can keep the fertile areas and hand them barren wastelands to keep them content. You say that, but it is perfectly evident to anyone with a drop of sense that he wants to avenge his mentor, friend, whatever that accursed priestess was. We can and should work out the details later. Malinka Shah, please. I am trying to pay attention. 
Could you keep quiet for a minute? We can discuss this later. Lord Galas, perhaps you would prefer to take some time to consider the proposal. Once we officially sign the pact, there will be no going back for us or your people. Nonetheless, I would like to put forth a clause of our own. Hmm, as you wish. Cool. Oh. We want the Lady of Light and the Lich Malkachar and all necromancers under his control to pledge unconditional allegiance to the Grand Council of the Northern Peoples. This also means that their actions will be governed by the Council rather than the Elves' leadership. Wait, what? Galas, you can't do this. Galas! I am sure they will accede. My condition is that their safety be guaranteed at all times, as this was also Malkashar's condition for assisting us on the way to Hearthgar. And if I must participate in field missions, I shall be allowed to have them by my, by my side, as I deem necessary or convenient. Galas, I object to this. Galas! I should have killed this kid when I had the opportunity back in those caves. <clears throat> Very well then. This has been a pleasantly productive discussion, everyone. We shall give Lord Galas one week to make his decision. But it would be highly beneficial for us to strike a deal with the Orcs first, as time is of the essence, and we need to secure their support before the Chaos Emperor does. I say we assign Lord Galas the task of negotiating with the Orcs. May this serve to the Council as proof of his commitment and loyalty. Agreed. 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 Galas, I hate you so much right now. Galas, why are you doing this? First you decide to leave the elves to war without consulting with Lord Enodian and the others. Then you treat me, us, as mere possessions to barter for political favours. You lost your senses. I am truly sorry, my Elinia, but I understand that you are intent on avenging Anlinde, but isn't the safety of your people a more pressing matter right now? Can you, how can you do this to them after going through so much to escape from the followers of Uriah? Elinia, do you really believe the Auerkwaith country can withstand a full-scale invasion from the Empire if the Dwarves couldn't? In Alvarden, Eidal, Hearthgar, all their larger kingdoms have fallen over time. The Aragwaith don't take the Empire's threat seriously, and only see this war as a convenient opportunity to keep their complacent troops entertained as well as to deal with the Orcs. They also expect us elves to do most of the work for them, so they will have even fewer of us to accommodate in these lands. My comrades, childhood friends, the Lord who I served faithfully all these years, the woman who cared for me as if I were her own son, they are all dead. Why would I want to perpetuate this living hell any more? Do you really believe the humans will be as charitable as to allow us to dwell in their territory without a steep price to pay? And what will we do when the Chaos Emperor comes knocking on our door? A war against the Empire could last for years, possibly decades. Our people. That is why we must figure out a way to put an end to this madness. Together. Wait, you are not thinking of... Taking the fight to their Emperor? I cannot go with you, Gallas. It has been far too long since I last participated in a mission like that, and I am far too weak from the amount of time I spent slumbering underground. And if it comes to that, I can't summon the power of the Union again, not without... I cannot be the elves' living weapon again. I'm sorry, Gallus. Fair enough. I will be taking Malkashar with me anyway. Who will lead the elves in your absence? Lord Enodian will replace me as the Regent Lord once we finish dealing with the orcs and humans. Don't worry, I'm sure you will make a fine advisor to him and Lady Unarye. It was not so long ago that he was but a meek kid who let the priestess make all decisions for him. <laughs> he has truly become something, don't you think? Yes, and that's exactly what troubles me.
We rested for that night in the safety and hospitality of Relpin, or at least most of us did. Having spent so many months on the field sleeping in crude sacks at night, I felt uncomfortable on the luxurious metal beds that civilization had to offer. Every once in a while I would get up and see Alinea standing or sitting on a nearby balcony, gazing at the moon. I felt compelled to go talk to her, but I knew there was nothing I could say to remedy the situation. The best I could do was to try and open up to her later, once her resentment subsided. When dawn broke, we immediately prepared for our journey into Orcish territory. I had to confront Alinea's eyes again. Truth be told, when we first met I never thought those gentle amber orbs could hold such contempt towards a living creature. To keep us in check, the Grand Council assigned us Erethan and a few other men, all highly skilled with the bow and arrow, under the pretense of protecting us from any potential attempts against our lives. Even though Malka Shah would disagree with me, it did not seem like the orcs ever considered causing any harm to us. At most they seemed displeased by the Council's choice of diplomats, as well as the fact that they hardly knew anything about our race and origins. But our insistence paid off in the end. We were finally granted an audience with Quoga Ratham, the local Orcish chieftain. Alright, we have a scenario here. It's scenario 15, Shadows of Time, Parting Ways. Of all the things that I had been through during this twisting journey across the continent, Playing ambassador to an orcish chieftain was amongst the most bizarre of them. We had gone from killing orcs on the sands without a single thought, to having relatively amicable conversations with their kin in the west. Little did I suspect then how things would soon take a darker turn. I must admit, it is a tempting deal. For other orcs, maybe, not us. We are not dogs who do all the hard work for inferior creatures like you in exchange for scraps. If we decide we want more lands and riches, we will take them by force on our own. Inferior creatures, you say? How dare you insult us, when it is only thanks to our sacrifices that you may yet have a chance to maintain your lifestyle. Ah, Gallas, I told you, using words and diplomacy with these illiterate beasts will not get us anywhere. Ah, and what do you propose then, Witch? You'd rather kill us? What benefit would that bring you? I could at least quench my thirst. It's been days since I last fell on one of your kind. Squabbling like children will not get us anywhere. This is not the time for resurrecting ancient conflicts. We must focus on fighting the real enemy that threatens all life on the great continent. That includes you, Orcs. As if I would believe your fantasy tales, fairy. It's obvious that you're trying to trick us to obtain cheap war beasts to solve your own problems. Our problems will eventually be yours as well. If you refuse to take part in our alliance, then we'll not insist further. But know that you will receive no help from us when you and your people see the truth. Are those war drums I hear? So, was it your plan all along to lure us into your domains to dispose of us? Orc. It is not you decrepit sack of bones. Where do they come from? Hail there, friend. What are you doing in my lands again? Exactly how many times do I have to rub your face in the mud before you'll give up your accession with overthrowing me, you thick-headed turd? Ha, huh. see who speaks. The weakling who's got a soft spot for the humans and their new tree shagger friends. Sorry, but this time I don't come alone. You see, cousin. I brought new friends. Ha ha! Ah, so you deal with those rotten necromancers now as well. That makes no difference to me, really. I see the Emperor was right to suspect that the Elves would team up with the Northerners. Very well, Heathens. This is the last time your kind escapes the power of Uriah and the Dark Lady. You shall not escape the might of the Iron Council again. What is that lich rumbling about? Iron Council? Ha! The Chaos Emperor must be getting desperate if he would resort to sending one of their foulest priests of Yetnagoth. 
I presume that our suicidal lady gave your precious warlord a hard time? Yechnogor, but she was vanquished, wasn't she? Those are blatant lies made up by heretics like you, Elf. Her power still lives, and is greater now than ever, thanks to Uriah's grace. Tansafar, give them a taste of her power. As you command, my master. By Elu's wrath, I shall make you suffer for your betrayal. Curse the Dark Gods! Those are elvish warriors! What is this new enemy we are facing? Our Furin re mentioned a rebel faction betraying the Quenel Hills while under Yetnogoth's control. These spectres must have been created from their lingering souls. It's unlikely that anyone else in this era worships this Elo figure. I fear we have no choice but to fight them. I don't like the sound of this. Orc Chieftain, you and your people had better stay clear of this battle. It is not yours to fight. Bah, I'm not running away like a puny elf just because of an undead incursion. I shall fight by your side. Odds are you'll perish without our help anyway. <laughs> you pathetic piece of... Marlin, for the sake of... Can you not at least put your issues from the past life aside for a short while? To arms. By the power bestowed upon me by the Dark Lady, I call forth the shadows from beyond the veil. May these plains be devoid of joy and peace. May they see only darkness and decay. Oh, where did this accursed fog come from? <laughs> Alright, we've got a job to do. The job is to defeat all enemy leaders. And we'll lose if Galas, Linear, or Malkashar dies, or if Erethan dies, who's now on our team, or if Quagar Ratham, the Orcish Chieftain, dies. As usual, we have an early finish bonus. We also have 40% of gold carried over, so we need to be at least a little bit careful with our timings. That's a nice briefing for the level, and because I've just done a ton of voice acting and rather not have to do it again, I'm going to pause it there, and we are going to take a break I'll be back with you soon for part two.